All right. Well, looks like we're recording. Anyway, um, this is my motor home. Haven't quite decided on a name on her for her yet. So, anyway, um, that is the steps that came on it. And the one on the driver's side was really, really weak. And so, therefore, I decided to pull off my old one that was on my <clears throat> on my bus over here and uh, since these are almost identical chassis and everything like that they're both E450s and the one that came off of uh, the motorhome is right there um, you can see that the, the end of it is already somewhat bent and uh, it's got one little bracket there for support and uh, anyway so it was a weak POS so I decided to get my hefty one off the bus and put it on my motorhome and right now I'm going to show you why this is the one off the bus aluminum diamond tread with multiple support brackets and there's another one that goes on the end over here that is uh, also a steel bracket but I do have to trim it down to size because my motorhome has a generator in the way and so uh, I have to um, take apart and, and re-weld that bracket so but uh, three out of four the front and those two brackets right there and actually and, and all of those screw holes um, should all match up I mean as far as being 100% usable now when I took this off the bus the bus has a lot more miles on it the bus has almost 150,000 miles on it whereas my motorhome's got 29,000 miles so this step has seen a lot more use well because of that there were portions underneath it where the wells had broken free and I'm going to show you that here in just a second Here, here we go. Okay, as you can see, this step has a lot more support. Look at all these other support brackets that are built into it. This is a serious piece of equipment here, and I love that. But because of the uh, usage that it had gotten, these wells, this one right here, that one down there that one um, had broken free and so um, with the welds breaking free and these bolts not going all the way through they're just holding on the brackets onto this lower portion of it um, I decided to put some additional supports so these brand new items right here that you see I put those on and they're a quarter inch stainless steel uh, bolts and nuts, nylocks, with extra wide washers for support. Because it, it is aluminum and uh, you know as I was tightening down it did start to bend so I had to make sure I didn't overdo it. And that's what these four screws are right here. And uh, But that came out almost perfect. I found the, uh, the right size of washer so that it wouldn't ride up on the diamond tread because if the washer rides up here then it's gonna get junk in there and, and have a tendency to corrode and stuff like that and so I was able to find some washers that were a good size but yet did fall and lay flat and then of course I used some extra heavy big washers fender washers on the back side here and so now the wells are all been pulled back together and uh, and it's got additional support here and so I'm gonna go ahead and get it mounted and then use those holes as a guide to um, drill uh, some holes quarter inch holes in the uh, uh, brace to the floorboard inside the bus there and then 
that'll give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten attachment points right there. And then I'm going to put a uh, recut. Oops. Recut this uh, metal brace that came uh, off of this unit. Excuse me. It had uh, this one attached up there um, underneath the step and then up into the body up here. But it went about 10 inches inside. And uh, but, but because my generator is right there, as you can see the exhaust, um, I have to trim it back. I can only go out about four inches and then go up and attach it where on the same piece of frame just has to be about six inches closer. And uh, I actually ordered a welder and this is exactly why, because I knew I was going to be doing stuff like this. And this is uh, mild steel. Um, it's probably uh, 3 16 uh, mild steel. And so uh, the light duty welder that I bought uh, should do this absolutely perfectly. And so uh, I'll need to basically cut a section out here and then shrink it up, drop it down to around four or five inches. I'll need to measure it, of course. And then I can, I can actually uh, just overlap it and then weld it and it should be super strong. So this part will uh, step underneath um, the, the step itself and then that part will be attached again to the body of the motorhome. And so that'll add another support bracket. So it'll have three steel support brackets and then multiple attachment points that go up against the, front, the body of the motorhome. And so that's going to be super strong and it should last forever. And as you can see, it's twice the size of that little piece of crap that I took off of there, which was almost useless. Twice the size and 10 times stronger. So I'm excited about that. I'm going to finish that up here in just a few minutes and then I'll show it to you when I got it on. Talk to you later. All right. Things are coming together really well here. And I just wanted to add this clip in here to show you that sometimes you really have to improvise, especially when you're doing stuff with nuts and bolts and you can't reach both sides. So the bolt is on this side and the nut is underneath the vehicle. And uh, so what I did was I was able to put my wrench on the bolt head there and have it wedged underneath this cable, which is actually the parking brake cable. And the parking brake cable was holding it down into, into spot, which was great. So I got that one done already. Then when I came up over here, the other one, which is underneath the screwdriver there, um, didn't have that much cable to hold it down. It had electrical around here, but nothing really on top of it. So then I thought, you know what? I've got a pretty, pretty hefty sized screwdriver here. Let me stick it underneath the wiring and wedge the, uh, the screwdriver onto the uh, the wrench there gotta have the wrench in the right position first <laughs> uh, and then to improvise a uh, basically a sorry about that a hold down point I put the, the screwdriver on top of the wrench and then let the wires rest on top of the screwdriver to uh, hold it in place and now I can go underneath and uh, tighten up my nylock um, nut and, and fender washer. And as you can see, I did use fender washers up here too. I love <laughs> how fender washers spread the load out and add support. And so uh, that's really important, especially when you're using um, 
steel on thin sheet metal like most everything is nowadays or aluminum or anything else that might be fragile it's always a good idea to spread the load out as much as possible and uh, go from there anyway that's it for now all right here we are back again I was just getting ready to put this um, kick panel, I guess you could call it, or step panel, back in the motorhome, and uh, I thought I would show it to you all and give you an idea as far as what you're stepping on every time you're getting in and out of your motorhome, or bus, or RV, or whatever you got. This is on the driver's side, or will be in a few minutes here, I'll show it to you. And I just wanted to show you some of the components that make it up and um, why you have to be careful with them. Uh, they are only held in by clips. There's metal clips that are on plastic pieces, which makes it fragile. Um, the metal clips that I'm talking about are these brown ones right there. This darn camera does not like to focus on when it's in video mode. I don't know why. I got to get a better camera. Anyway, so the brown metal clip is on a black plastic piece of plastic that comes out of the rest of this, which is basically molded plastic. Okay. So these brown clips are what hold it in place. And if you end up uh, prying on it the wrong direction or pulling it in the wrong direction, these plastic pieces will break. And right there is a perfect example. There used to be one right there, and it's gone. I'll show you where it's at. It is still on the vehicle. And there it is. Okay. Now, it's not hurting anything being right there, but it's not helping anything either. Fortunately, this unit has several other clips that hold it in place. There's one there. There's another one down here. Another one here. And then another one back there, behind the, uh, and so it, it does have several others that hold it in place, and so that should be adequate. And then what I'm going to do is wipe this down, clean it up just a little bit, uh, before I start putting the pieces back together. And one of the things that, or some of the stuff that I found underneath it when I opened it up, was all of these things. Um, spare parts, I guess you could say. Even this was, was down there. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I don't know. So anyway, just wanted to show you a little bit about that. And uh, I'm going to get that cleaned up and then put it back in. And uh, then I got one more brace to cut and weld and then install on this footstep and it will be done but I don't have my welder yet so anyway the best I can do is to uh, prep the metal and get it ready so anyway that's what I'm doing now after I put in the rest of this step alright talk to y'all later <laughs>